So, first of all, on the uh, MODEM and RF side, uh, Qualcomm and QCT are making a number of announcements that represent industry first. We'll be doing live demos of our CAT6 uh, commercialization plans in smartphone uh, platforms. We'll be demonstrating our first CAT6 uh, implementation for the automotive market. We will be uh, showing you trials of uh, our commercially launched uh, LTE broadcast solution that has recently launched in Korea uh, and with upcoming launches at Verizon and Telstra. Uh, we are very pleased to announce the very first commercialization of our complete RF360 solution uh, with the ZTE Grand S2. Uh, you'll be able to see that in the ZTE booth if you go past. Uh, we continue to lead our innovation in the 3G space as well, uh, demonstrating uh, three carrier HSDPA uh, aggregation as well as dual carrier HSPA uh, implementations. Those are uh, some demonstrations you can see in our booths and some of our infrastructure partners as well. Also, uh, we'll have live demos of our LTE 3G multi mode dual SIM capability. We believe we're taking multi-mode into the next era with uh, LTE multi-mode uh, dual SIM and triple SIM solutions. So a lot of innovations that uh, we have to share with you on the RF side. Uh, in terms of CAT6, as I said earlier, this show will see the uh, launch of our, the commercial, uh, the, sorry, the press launch of our uh, uh, 9X35 Adobe modem. And along with it, we'll be launching our next generation uh, transceiver uh, architecture, which integrates the ability to support dual carrier aggregation into one type of solution. Together, we believe they offer an extremely powerful uh, combination of our next generation, our fourth generation, in fact, LTE technology, where we combine dual carrier aggregation spanning two times 20, uh, 20 megahertz uh, that offers us peak data rates on the downlink of up to 300 megabits per second. It also supports both FDD and TDD modes, and it represents our first 20 nanometer launch product. The RF transceiver is special in that it replaces uh, what has been a two transceiver implementation up until now. It's our fourth generation of LTE transceiver, and our first in 28 nanometer. And uh, it supports uh, more than three times the number of carrier aggregation bands than previous generations of uh, RF chips. So clearly, both on the modem and on the RF transceiver front, uh, we bring into play our fourth generation of architectures that just demonstrates how aggressively we're innovating in this space. I think what it also shows is that when we talk about LTE, it's very easy to oversimplify LTE into a single homogeneous aggregate concept. In actual fact, uh, the uh, layers of LTE are pretty complicated, and quite frankly, the fourth generation of LTE builds upon uh, five years of fundamental research to get to this point. So uh, it's, uh, it's interesting to note that uh, underneath the term LTE uh, are, are substantial generations of innovations that are worth keeping in mind. Um, one of the interesting uh, uh, announcements we're also making is that the 9X30 modem uh, that's derived from the Gerber modem we just talked about will also be launched with our uh, automotive Snapdragon 602A part. Again, this is a, 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 an architecture that we believe is ideally suited for the automotive applications going forward and features a plethora of capabilities that were earlier seen on our uh, 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 896, uh, uh, sorry, our 8064 platform that was, uh, that was launched last year. And this chip will now basically make its way into the automotive space and it will be coupled with the Adobe 9X30 for automotive. These will be uh, specifically hardened uh, for the reliability requirements of the automotive space and uh, will bring, we believe, a, uh, a real evolution to uh, what's available in the automotive uh, environment. Uh, of particular to, uh, note here is uh, the fact that uh, in addition to providing uh, 40 megahertz carrier aggregation in both LTE, FDD and TDD nodes, uh, we will also be supporting with this platform our uh, Qualcomm 5 Wi-Fi 
and Bluetooth solution for dedicated short-range communication. So not only are we offering a platform that supports uh, cellular connectivity, but, uh, but also we're bringing together our next generation Wi-Fi to support this platform as well. Broadcast is also going to be an important area for innovation for Qualcomm, and as I said earlier, we, uh, we recently announced the commercial launch of uh, our LTE broadcast solution in Korea, and uh, soon to be announced both on Verizon and on Telstra. Um, we have a, what we believe is a uniquely positioned multimedia services device client that's resident on our Snapdragon 800 platform. Uh, and its key advantages compared to other solutions out there is that it's interoperable with all major infrastructure. <coughs> it supports both Dash and HEVC video codec support. Uh, it supports multiband and mobility requirements from various operators. It's performance and power optimized for Hansa implementation. And we support it with a proven SDK. So we're pretty excited about uh, what LTE broadcast means to the carrier community and the type of services that can be offered. And we think that our client solutions implemented on our Snapdragon 800 and later to be implemented on follow-on chips positions us very well to drive that, uh, that uh, part of the market forward. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, in, uh, Korea Telecom launched a service in January and two additional operators are uh, ready to launch uh, uh, during the course of 2014. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, up to about eight operators are in trials right now across uh, Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, the Asia Pacific region, and North America, including Verizon and Telstra. And we're interoperability testing with four major vendors to make sure that all those operator engagements can be uh, delivered seamlessly. Um, and we see a wide variety of uh, new applications and services being supported on that uh, LTE broadcast platform, such as in-revenue multitasking, newspaper and magazine downloads, breaking news feeds, over-the-air OS updates, uh, digital signage and mobile advertising, as well as supporting 4K video broadcast. Again, we see this as being particularly relevant to the dissemination of live media, such as sports and news, to a, to a large, uh, to a large you know, user community. Uh, again, uh, we'll be able to see multiple networks supporting those features as we go through 2014. Moving on to uh, our RF360 solution. As I said earlier, we're very pleased to uh, see the, uh, uh, one of the first handsets to use all of our RF360 solution in the ZTE uh, brand S2. Uh, uh, just to summarize what our RF360 offering provides, uh, it's really about providing a complete RF solution for the complex LTE radio environment that we face today, where we have multiple bands of LTE, further complicated by multiple combinations of carrier aggregation. But in the constructs and in the envelope of our RF360 solution, we're, offer we're offering envelope tracking solutions, antenna matching solutions, as well as PA and antenna switch solutions and uh, uh, soon to be offered are our RF POP solutions that offer 3D RF packaging for real area efficiency when it comes to complex RF designs. As regards our multi-SIM strategy, um, this show will see the elevation of what Qualcomm has to offer to a new panacea where we will be announcing, uh, delivered with the Snapdragon 800 series, our first triple SIM solution for LTE. Not only do we deliver dual SIM, dual standby uh, solutions that support LTE and uh, 3G combinations on our Snapdragon 400 series, but uh, with the 800 series now we support triple SIM, triple uh, standby, and uh, 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 we believe that those are going to be uh, fairly interesting for some of the global opportunities that we see today. So uh, we're building on uh, an expanding portfolio of dual SIM technologies, and, and I think we lead the way now in terms of uh, multi SIM support. And when it comes to our modem technologies, our GOBI modem solutions, again, we believe our systems continue offer, to offer a, uh, a total system solution. Not only are we integrating the, the modem and uh, RF environment into our GOBI modems, 
but we're also looking at uh, providing location support. Uh, we're supporting, supporting internet protocol acceleration. Uh, we'll have IP multimedia subsystems available to support uh, MiFi applications and the like. Uh, and as I said, we have multi-SIM engine support as well. So I think one of the key messages that we're putting out to the industry as far as our remote end support is concerned is that uh, the whole is much greater than some of the parts of the various IP blocks we integrate. So our go to remote end solutions in and of themselves support a wide range of applications all the way from, uh, from MiFi uh, solutions to mobile broadband solutions and even machine to machine solutions. We believe this is going to uh, really uh, take LTE beyond just the, uh, the phone space into a, a number of connected uh, opportunities. On the Snapdragon processor front, one thing that is going to be a hallmark of, uh, of our Snapdragon story is that uh, we're going to be providing Snapdragon solutions that essentially maximize our user experience in every tier that a smartphone can prevail. So we're really looking to, do, to, to define the smartphone experience as being uncompromised, whatever the user price point may be, from a perspective of uh, user experience. At this show, you'll be seeing 15 or more OEMs uh, uh, showing uh, or, 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 uh, or expecting to launch Snapdragon devices. You'll see the introduction of our Snapdragon 801 processor, together with the introduction of our Snapdragon 610 and 615 processors. And we're also expanding the reference designs that support our understands with the support of a Qualcomm reference design platform for Windows mobile phones. So additional uh, Snapdragon processors intro introduced at our premium tier level, as well as proliferating uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the mass market tier with the 610 and 615. And this follows on from the Snapdragon 400 announcements we made at CES. So really, just to kind of uh, reacquaint you with the range and breadth of our Snapdragon platforms, as I said earlier, we, we, we launched the latest edition of the Snapdragon 400 series in uh, December uh, uh, of last year. And that was uh, uh, announced our first 64-bit Snapdragon processor. At this show, we're launching the, uh, sorry, at CES, we talked about the Snapdragon 805 processor that drives Ultra HD uh, and really high quality uh, video into uh, the uh, applications processor domain for smartphones. And at this show, we're augmenting that portfolio with a Snapdragon 801 and the Snapdragon 610 and 605. So as you can see, I think we have a pretty awesome uh, lineup of LTE-enabled uh, processors that cover the, the complete range of the product presentations we see it. Just talking a little bit about the 801, uh, which, is, uh, which is a key platform for us, uh, key drivers for those activities were to improve user experiences in the form of supporting 1080p H.265 video, uh, augmenting the platform to support ENMT 5.0 standards, uh, supporting uh, a more sophisticated camera solution, as well as supporting uh, dual SIM, dual active configurations, as I've already said. The camera performance is, uh, from a sensor point of view, is 45% faster. The graphic solution has been uh, uh, improved uh, by over 28%. 14% CPU capability improvement, as well as 18% uh, improvement in the DSP capability and 14% faster memory solutions. So what this uh, platform really provides is uh, a seamless ability to enhance the capability uh, for those that have already commercialized the Snapdragon 800 platform. We have a solution that provides a tremendous hardware and software reuse equation while at the same time delivering, we believe, uh, a, a much more enhanced platform. So again, exactly what our OEMs have been asking for, which is continuous improvement on a stabilized uh, hardware and software platform. So we expect to see a plethora of devices launch very rapidly uh, on the back of this device. And then talking a little bit about the Snapdragon 610 and 615 solutions, these are the world's first commercial 64-bit quad-core and octa-core chipset with integrated five-mode 
global LTE. Again, let me make sure you, you pick up the key points here. The first 64-bit octa-core and quad-core chipsets with an integrated five-mode global LTE modem. That modem solution picks up from uh, a very mature solution, a third-generation LTE solution that is battle-hardened and commercially proven, and we believe uh, represents uh, a really strong solution for uh, this tier of products. Uh, it supports LTE, 3G and 2G, multi-SIM, uh, dual-SIM, dual-access support, full support for our RF360 solutions uh, that supports a five-mode operation. It's a 64-capable <coughs> bit, sorry, 64-bit capable device that can be uh, programmed in 32-bit as well. <coughs> Uh, the 610 offers a quad-core version, and the 615 offers uh, an eight-core version uh, of, uh, of the device. Uh, we support uh, 2K high-K, so 2K high-resolution uh, display support, uh, mirror-cast wireless display support. As I said, it supports H.265 uh, hardware decode. It also introduces into this tier are uh, Adreno 400 series of premium tier graphics with more API support and features than previous generations. Uh, these devices are software and pin compatible with the Snapdragon 410, so it provides an incredibly complementary platform play such that uh, common PCBs and common factory infrastructure can be used for all three devices. And of course, the QRD version will support our uh, complete RF360 solution as well. So again, we think this is an incredibly powerful augmentation to our roadmap and really I think fills out what we believe is a world-class LTE portfolio that spans all the way from the premium tier towards the mass market opportunities as we see LTE prolifer proliferate and globalize around the globe. Good, so those are the highlights of uh, what Qualcomm has to announce today. Clearly a lot going on as far as Qualcomm is concerned, and hopefully you've got a brief taster of all of those key announcements. I'm more than happy to uh, take some uh, question and answers uh, uh, from the audience if you have it. So Bertha and I will take questions on each side. What I would ask is look at yourself to one question. Please identify your outlet before you ask the question in name, please. So we'll start. Oh. Christian Graham from Executive Talks. So talk a little about the uh, 615 of the core, um, what was the point, 64 bit. And uh, so I have a question that really relates to, then, then you have the 800, right? So I'm almost thinking, well, the 800 is at the high end of the 615. But the question is really uh, now that Apple has shifted to 64 bit, what type of interest and impact do you, do you see it have from? from whoever makes the handset? Sure, very topical question. So I think what we're really seeing is um, a general trend towards homogenizing the development environment for both the uh, laptop, the tablet, and the smartphone space. So I think if you look at application providers who are looking to provide applications transportable across all three platforms, then I think over time, a trend towards 64-bit addressing and 64-bit execution is inevitable. Now, I think that will be, the pace at which that will uh, move forward, I think is going to be uh, 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 interesting to see. One thing we see is we don't think that that will be instantaneous or overnight, but we believe that in the second half of the year, for platforms that we're delivering for launch in the second half of the year, we think it's an appropriate time to make that transition. And if you look at the successor processors to the Snapdragon 800 and 805, they too will, will be 64-bit based architectures. The 801 and 805 are really built upon the uh, very successful platforms that preceded them and their incremental revisions of those chips. So they take forward a lot of embedded R&D in terms of hardware and software, and we think they provide uh, exemplary solutions for the premium tier as they stand today. But I think as we look to platforms that will be going into 2014 and 2000, sorry, the second half of 2014 into 15, it's an appropriate point uh, in time we believe to make the transition to 64 bit. Michael Miller, PC Mac, can you explain what kinds of cores are 610 and 615? Sure, the 610 and 615 uh, make use of the uh, ARM 853 based architecture.
inside that uh, sample of A, 110 and 6, 410 or 610? I'm sorry, I didn't say So, uh, okay, uh, Snapdragon 800 or 600, uh, it has a Crypto processor core, so it has a different name of Crypto 300 and Crypto 400. Right. Okay, so uh, the 64 bit version of the Crypto has a uh, name for each, or it was all the same. Or Right, uh, right, of course, inside the uh, 810 or 410 or 610. Okay, let me clarify uh, answers earlier. Uh, the, uh, the 610, 615 use the ARM A53 cores, they don't use the crate cores. The crate uh, in the 800 series is a crate 400 uh, uh, version of, of that product. So, as I answered the earlier question, will be declaring uh, our follow-on to the crate uh, CPU architecture in the due course of time. Uh, as we uh, end up coming closer to the proximity of the chipsets that we'll be using our next generation of processor, we'll be sharing more details of what we're doing in, in terms of our own custom 64-bit implementation. Hi, uh, same. Yes, the 9835 that we just talked about is in 20 nanometer. And so, is there a time like the SOC is 20 nanometer as well? Yes, it's uh, pretty soon. I think we'll, uh, you know, I think if you can think about before you launched our modem processor, you can just go back and uh, do a do a kind of comparison with how we've done it in previous generations, and I think the timelines will be similar. Do you think the SMC has capacity and already all that kind of stuff? Um, yes.